Jamaica, like most of the English-speaking Caribbean, has a significant portion of its population engaged in farming and agriculture. The agriculture sector employs 20% of the labor force but contributes a disproportionate 5.4% to GDP. Jamaica has 220,000 small farmers who occupy 77% of lands under cultivation and their only income is revenue from their farming. Jamaica also has a network of agro-processing firms and like the hospitality industry, they depend on imported raw materials due to the lack of year-round local supply. The agricultural sector already impacts the lives and livelihoods of many Jamaicans and has vast economic potential if the industry is systematically developed. Sector stakeholders have recognized agriculture's potential and identified the need for the development of a private sector-led strategy. The strategy development was funded by the European Union through the All-ACP Agriculture Commodities Programme and championed by the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. The lead technical agency was the International Trade Centre. Other international and regional organizations like CARICOM, CARDI, Oxfam, the World Bank, FAO and UNCTAD provided support to the sector stakeholders for the development of this strategy. Using the value chain approach, the strategy was developed by more than 120 sector stakeholders representing government institutions, development agencies, farmers, processors, buyers, and lending institutions. The implementation of the strategy represents a window of opportunity for Jamaica to reduce expenditure on fresh and processed food imports and also to boost exports. Jamaica's food import bill was approximately 886 million US dollars in 2008, a good indicator of the local market potential. It is expected that the agricultural and food processing strategy will positively impact the Jamaican economy by increasing revenue inflows while reducing the dependency on overseas remittances and on traditional sectors such as sugar and bauxite alumina, which together accounted for an average of 63% of total exports between 2002 to 2008. The strategy was launched by the Honorable Christopher Tufton, Minister of Agriculture, and by the Honorable Audley Shaw, Minister of Finance, in October 2009. The size of the processed food industry in Jamaica is about 250 million US dollars. It is conservatively estimated that the potential size could be 10 times that much. That's 2.5 billion US dollars. That would make that would dwarf the bauxite industry. So I think that we have to get our act together. We've got to get serious. I welcome the International Trade Center and the work that they're doing for us. I welcome all of our development partners. I welcome the work of the Scientific Research Council. Critical stakeholder groups uh, that include, of course, the farmers of Jamaica, the agro-processors, all the critical players in the value chain uh, and have produced what was presented here today which is a blueprint of where we need to go in terms of moving the process forward. Uh, as was said earlier by Mrs. Barnett and others, I fully and certainly the Ministry of Agriculture has played its part, Don McGlashan being our main person there, we fully endorse and support the program. The vision is to quadruple the output and value of Jamaican food products, including fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, 
roots and tubers by 2020 and to contribute in a sustainable manner to the achievement of Jamaica's Vision 2030 National Development Plan. Jamaica and a whole we need small farmers to take up because it will build, build the economy. Because if we don't start from here, we're going nowhere. Because we need to extend, not even South Manchester, but Jamaica in general. The strategy is, is, will help us greatly because it, it gives us a, a tool to work with. And there are a number of other tools that the ministry has at its disposal, and this, is, this will become one of those critical tools. It will also help us in guiding our relationship with existing players, where it's a process, the farmers. And that's very important because if we get the farmers on board and we're on the same page, then it makes our job of selling the process, the plan, easier. So it's easy for, for us to, to go to the, the country and say, this is what we are proposing. Without you know, the, the descending voices that you normally would hear, if you don't use a bottom-up approach to get people involved in the process. We think it's a very good thing for the agricultural sector. We think it is structured in such a way that it looks at the big picture of development of the agricultural sector in Jamaica. Um, the fact that the project could be broken down into objectives for farmers, processors and buyers um, and the, the, the state as well as technical assistance from international organizations um, is instructive because it brings together the various elements that I think we as processors and exporters have been grappling with over time. Small business enterprises have to be coordinated, back integrated into the farming community. So these have to be linked with producers who are provided information as to what the requirements of the particular establishment or processing facility will be. The, these requirements, when known, will have to be supported by other objectives within the strategy. The whole matter of organizing and training farmers to be able to deliver a quality product into the processing facility and time, consistency and quality. So the whole matter of the farmers being trained in good agricultural practices, in terms of the whole matter of understanding their role in the value chain, and as a, as a matter of fact, the entire value chain has to be understood by both the processor, the, 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 the buyer, and the producer, so that at each time there is trust along the value chain as to exactly what is happening, the dynamics of, of, of the activities along the value chain so that trust can be built, to, which will augur well for a sustainable development of any industry, particularly as we are speaking of fruits and vegetables, roots and tubers and herbs and spices. The strategy implementation will focus on the revitalization of the fruits and vegetables, roots and tubers, and herbs and spices industries using the value chain approach. Because the strategy is being led by the private sector, it has enabled a sector-specific platform of public-private partnership for decision-making. The strategy identifies two main market priorities, import substitution and development of the domestic market for fresh and processed foods, and export development for current and niche products. What is, is exciting about uh, the process for me is that it's ultimately a private sector driven um, strategy. It's a strategy developed by the private sector for the private sector. Um, and I think this is what is needed in the, the, the agricultural sector. The producers, the farmers need to take things into their own hand, be the, the masters of their own destiny. And I think this is a fantastic effort. I think it is a wonderful move by the private sector to take the industry forward. It's, it's long overdue. The dynamics of farming now is stepping up in the world. Based on what's going on in the international market, you'll notice most industries are down. For one, a human being must eat food, and that's the only industry will ever grow. you notice a gentleman may lose his job or get paid off tomorrow. Next thing you do, he goes to farming. Okay, it's, it's, it's not a way of life anymore, it's a business now. The entire Caribbean came together to look at food security, 
poverty alleviation, linking farmers to the market. And I watched farmers from the Caribbean selected the crops, roots and tubers, fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices that they want to deal with and prioritize them. Then I heard of the role of five international agencies, the World Bank, UNCTAD, CFC, ITC, and um, FAO. Right? Really amazed, five international agencies that normally don't work with each other so well begin <coughs> to converge and address the problem that we have in this country. I'm excited, and today is a final workshop, and please with the outcome to date. Based on market potential and supply capacity, stakeholders have agreed to concentrate on fresh fruit and vegetables for domestic consumption, pepper mash and sauces, concentrates, pastes and pulps, including beverages and industrial ingredients, convenience foods, and Aki based products. There are 20 active farmers now, tried and tested, and um, they have been involved with us now for the past four years. Um, they, we have contracts with them to supply a scallion, and they are willing to produce things like pepper. And should the tomato project come off, then that is to say if we were to get the equipment to go to tomato paste, they could become major suppliers. If we could uh, improve this equipment, we could lower the boiling point. And lowering the boiling point, uh, evaporating at 60, 70 degrees, would help get a better product in terms of color, uh, consistency, and aroma. And it would even, uh, probably, um, even certainly, if it's well done, save energy. So you are winning on many points, and this is the kind of operations that we are considering. There are six main strategy objectives. To establish a private-public coordination mechanism for the management of the strategy implementation. Increase the availability of supply and demand related information to allow informed decision making by the private sector as well as policy makers. Increase raw material supply from small-scale farmers by 400% by 2020. This will be achieved by organizing and training farmers through agronomic services. To provide access to low-cost funding and risk management mechanisms to 70% of the targeted farming population and agro-processors by 2015. Increase the production of processed food products by 150% by 2020 and improve overall value-adding operations to achieve competitive advantages. To provide access to low-cost, high-value planting material, including seeds and seedlings, for fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, and roots and tubers, to 95% of the 220,000 small farmers by 2015. My commitment to getting the project up and started, in fact, not just mine, but that of my organization, Bell Tropicals, is that we are willing to partner within the project by making purchases from farmers who will come in through this project. The ministry is also taking ownership our joint ownership of the process with existing group um, players, whether it's the processors or the farmers. In other words, what we're saying is that it's not just a plan that, that is being developed by, by all these groups. A plan is developed jointly with the ministry and that we, we also we own this plan. We, we consider this plan to be a plan that the ministry will, will champion and, 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 and run with. Implementation of this strategy has already begun and many organizations are working together to support the activities that are targeting agro-processing, buying, and farming associations. They include the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Jamaica Exporters Association, the Scientific Research Council, Jamaica Trade and Invest, 
Jamaica Agro Processors Association, the Christiana Potato Growers Association, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the International Trade Center. The process involves everybody. So nobody should be in any uncertainty as to what their role is and what needs to be done to advance the process. I believe in building capacity, but we need the logistical support and we need the, the strategy and the know-how um, to get it done in a refined way. Um, I've sat down with, with the team at my office and they, they, they understand that I, I see directly what they're trying to do and uh, they are getting my full support. The processors, the buyers, we also had the implementing partners and development partners, the FAO, UNCTAD. It was really, really heartening to see. And of course, because the International Trade Center helped to bring us this far, it's good to see that they, we have benefited from their best practice. The way ahead is critical to the development of agribusiness in Jamaica. And with strong backing from the Jamaican government, the sector stakeholders have organized themselves into a value chain task force to lead the way in coordinating activities and mobilizing resources. The value chain task force includes representatives from farmer associations, the Jamaica Agro Processor Association, and all the relevant government ministries. For me and to the implementing partners, it is important to recognize that this particular strategy document was done by the stakeholders involved in Jamaica. So whatever recommendations, whatever objectives or strategies are outlined here are from Jamaica. So what that will mean to an implementing partner that you already have a roadmap and a blueprint as to where exactly you can make an intervention to assist in the development of Jamaica and countries similar to Jamaica. The task force will be requesting financial support from the international donor community to contribute to the successful implementation of this strategy. The implementation process requires that all development activities are coordinated through its public-private management framework, which is private sector-led.